Hello Internet, it is Lentus. And Shadow Palace has finally arrived to Counterside Global, so let's talk about it. First, let's start with an overview of the mode and the rewards that the mode gives. And then I'll give tips on the first palace. And then after that, we'll talk about the Shadow Palace gears. So without further ado, uh, let's get right into it. Shadow Palace is another PvE mode where you go through several rooms with special bosses and team building restrictions. Shadow Palace can be accessed through the world map. It's this red button next to the danger close button. You get uh, these crystals. They're called the Quantum Chords Crystals. I'll just call them Palace Keys. Um, you get one key every day and you can store up to seven keys. And you use these keys in order to enter the palace. Each palace will have five rooms that you need to progress to. The first three rooms will introduce each boss and on the fourth and fifth room you will fight a combination of them. Each room will also have different team building restrictions. For example, the first shadow palace, the first room strikers are banned, the second room defenders are banned, the third room rangers are banned, and for the fourth room your total deployment cost must be 25 or below and on the last room the total deployment cost must be 25 or below but also mechs are banned and the other shadow palaces follow this sort of pattern you essentially have three lives for the palace run and if you fail three times you get kicked out of the palace and you stop getting rewards another thing to note is that you can stack the keys so that you get a multiplier on your rewards but you only do one run similar to how you stack um, missions the main rewards for the shadow palace is these pyramid things called shadow fragments they're basically currencies to be used in the shop the things you can buy in the shop are the molds for the shadow palace gear and as well as binaries both the blue ones and the gold ones as well as some like crafting stuff the crafting modes uh, reset every week, uh, but the gold binaries, the set binaries, reset monthly. As for suggestions on what to buy, um, obviously you want to buy the cheapest modes first. And then it's up to you if you want to buy the ultra precise. The only difference is that ultra precise guarantees uh, purple rarity or higher, while the normal modes you can get uh, the blue rarity ones. And then after you buy your molds, you can buy the set binaries and the blue binaries. And after I buy the binaries, only then will I consider buying the extra molds that are more expensive. The crafting materials and the upgrade materials, I don't really suggest you buy them. There are other ways to obtain crafting materials and the upgrade materials such as the uh, like weekly rotations in the challenge stages as well as just getting them from the supply stages. So now I'll give tips on the first palace. Uh, I think there is one boss there that is the hardest thing on both the first and the second palace and that is the evil Jushun. And he has this really big counter that deals AoE damage. There are a couple of ways to deal with him. One is to redirect the ultimate to the other way. Unfortunately, the first room bans strikers, so you can't use Ingrid, so you have to use Kang Suyong. The second way to deal with it is to just use awakened units. The evil Jushiun cannot counter awakened units. Keep in mind that the awakened unit will only prevent Jushiun from triggering the counter. If you deploy someone at the back in order to attack Jushiun, then the counter will still trigger. But if you have Awaken Hilde, remember that if your units are behind the defender, it reduces their damage. You can also use your own Jushiun in order to counter the evil Jushiun's counter. You counter the counter. As for general tips, um, AoE is very good in Shadow Palace. You'll be up against a large number of soldiers. So Edel is very good here, Gaion is very good here. Awakened Yuna is very good here, etc. 
Uh, and I think that's it. It's enough to clear at least the first two palaces if you can find an answer to the evil Jushion. As long as your units are leveled and you have some sort of uh, equipment on your uh, carries, such as Maze on your DPSs and Gordius on your tanks, I think you can clear the first two palaces. So now let us get into the Shadow Palace gear. What are they? Um, the sets and the substats that are available, which are good, etc. So Shadow Palace gears are sort of an alternative to the Maze gears. They are mostly an offensive set that you can specialize into uh, countering a specific role, strikers, defenders, etc. However, they're not that good at stacking skill haste. We'll get to that later. So these are the available set bonuses for the Shadow Palace gears. As you can see, they're different from the other gears. All of them provide attack and one other stat. And the two-piece gears can be found on all of them, even the blue rarity ones. But the four-piece bonuses can only be found on purple rarity or higher. The first sub is always one of the four anti-roll damage. So anti-defender, anti-striker, etc. The second sub for the weapon and the accessories, ideally it's anti-ground damage in order to complement the anti-roll damage. So this is how it's comparable to the May set where the May set gives anti-ground damage and some other stats. The Shadow Palace Gears gives anti-roll damage and ideally you get anti-ground damage with it. So unfortunately, you can't get anti-ground damage on the armor, so it can be whatever you want. So I'm focusing a lot on the subs rather than the set bonuses because I think that the subs are way more important than the set bonuses. I think it's more important for you to stack one type of anti-roll damage in order to specialize in countering that roll. And the important ones are the anti-defender and the anti-striker just because those are the frontliners, so those are the tanky ones that you want to burst down. Of course, if you can get uh, set bonuses on top of getting all of the right subs, then it will also increase your DPS. The best one is probably the Spectral Blaze set because it also increases your attack speed. But if you can get uh, two set bonuses of the two-piece ones, then that's also good. Now, you might be wondering, what about skill haste? Can we get skill haste? And the answer is... Kinda no? Uh, you can technically get some skill haste, but it's not that worth it. So first of all, the skill haste set, the Spectral Spirit, only gives 12% skill haste. And on top of that, the weapon cannot give skill haste on any of its substats. So you're forced to get it on only the armor and the accessories. Now if you can get the highest rarity of all 4 pieces on the right set bonuses and all of the right substats, it's only 44 skill haste. But the opportunity cost is that you lose anti-ground damage from the accessory substat. You're losing 30 anti-ground damage for the 22 skill haste, which I don't think is really that worth it since you don't go that high anyway. So yeah, it's not really that worth it to specifically go for skill haste. If for example you get it with the ideal setup that we talked about before that's stacking anti-roll damage and the anti-ground damage and then you get it all on spectral spirit and then you get an additional 10 from the armor, which doesn't give the anti-ground damage anyway, then that's fine. Also, just a reminder, because the Shadow Palace gears are craftable uh, weekly, then you should not use any of your set binaries or the gold binaries on them. Use your gold binaries on your maze sets in order to complete your CDR gears. And uh, that was the video. Um, I hope that was informative. Um, uh, I apologize if you were looking for uh, tips on the higher palaces, but I haven't gotten there yet in my global account, so I'm not that confident on giving tips for it. 
So thank you for watching the video.